God's grace, his mercy, and his peace be multiplied to you in the precious name of his Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd like to share with you some words and thoughts regarding the gospel lesson for this day from Luke 14. In this chapter, Jesus seems to be changing all the usual rules of behavior. He is, he is teaching the rule of the rule of love to live by, not the law. According to the Pharisees, you could only help someone on the Sabbath day if their life was in danger. In this text, Jesus teaches that humility is more important than being esteemed. I grew up at a Lutheran church in Cleveland, Ohio. It was an old German Lutheran church. Until the day it closed, we had services in German and in English. It was a wonderful congregation. I was blessed by being there, by being a member, going to the school there. But one of the things that I noticed in the church service, and I never attended the German service, I didn't speak German, but one of the things I noticed was nobody sat in the front pews. Everybody sat in the back of the church. And I think a part of this was they didn't want to be considered prideful. They didn't want to sit up front. They thought, we're not worthy to sit up front. We're not worthy to sit in these front pews. So let's take the back. So the back pews were always the ones that were filled. I would say that's probably false humility. Jesus talks about humility and the significance of humility in this text. We have a clear example from Jesus in Philippians chapter 2. Turn to that, please. Philippians chapter 2, beginning with verse 5. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, or, or something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in humble likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. In the epistle lesson that we just read uh, this morning, we hear about humility again. Be completely humble, Paul says in Ephesians. That doesn't mean to sit in the back of the church. <laughs> it's far more significant than that. In the gospel lesson that we just heard, Jesus healed on the Sabbath. In the gospels, seven times it's recorded that Jesus healed on the Sabbath. In Luke chapter 4, verse 38, Jesus heals Simon's mother on the Sabbath. In Luke 6, 6, the man with a withered hand is healed on the Sabbath. In Luke 13, 13, a woman bent over for 18 years is healed on the Sabbath. In John chapter 5, verse 9, a paralytic at the pool of Bethesda is healed on the Sabbath. In John chapter 9, verse 4, a man is born blind 
and is healed on the Sabbath. Mark 1, verse 21, Jesus heals a man who is possessed by a demon on the Sabbath. I'd like to read another scripture. This one is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18. first four verses of Matthew 18. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked him, Who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, Whoever, whosoever takes the, whole, the lowly position of this child is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Okay, children. If you're humble, raise your hand. <laughs> I have another question. Who knows how to spell? Who's a good speller here? Who's a good speller? Are you? Can you tell me what what this what is this spell? J O Y. What does J O Y spell? Joy. Joy. This is a lesson in humility. J for Jesus. O for others, Y for yourself. So in our lives, we put Jesus first, others second, ourself last. And we'll walk in humility. We will walk in humility then. So if you want to practically know how to walk in humility, think of that word joy. Put Jesus first in your life. Put others second and yourself last. And you will honor God. And he will bless you and be with you and take after you. I pray you will be blessed by this word. God's Holy Spirit will continue to reach out to you and lead you in humility. And Jesus said we must become like a little child. You know, when you teach a child something, they believe it. I remember when I was at a Lutheran church in Charlotte, and the children started, we had communion every Sunday, for which I'm very thankful. When I grew up in the Lutheran church, we had communion four times a year. Because Luther once said, I doubt whether anyone is a Christian who has communion less than four times a year. So these old German Lutherans said, okay, four times a year. And we had a pastor, Edwin Jacob, who was a part of the St. James Society that desired to want to see communion observed and celebrated more frequently. And I remember some of the other pastors in town would call him a papist because he was in favor of having communion more frequently. And I remember then our church having communion, at least we started with once a month. And that was a big deal in this German congregation to go from four times a year to 12 times a year. And I'm very grateful in, in my, our church that we attend uh, in um, Linville, Mountainside Lutheran. We have communion like you do here every Sunday. What a blessing. What a blessing that is to be able to receive the Lord's holy body and precious blood. To be loved by God. To have God wrap his arms around us and say, you're my precious child. I love you. We are blessed. So may the Lord bless you as we Prepare to celebrate Holy Communion. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.